Welcome to the Alabama Vendor Training Module for Authorized WIC Vendors. Viewing this training module and ensuring all store personnel are trained on WIC policies and procedures will ensure a successful eWIC transaction. Courteous, well-trained store employees create positive shopping experiences that keep customers coming back to the store. By the end of this training module, you should have a general understanding of the WIC program, how eWIC works, the basic steps of an eWIC transaction, how to troubleshoot an eWIC transaction, and important WIC regulations. Valuable resources to accompany this training are the Alabama WIC Approved Foods Brochure and the Alabama WIC Program Vendor Procedure Handbook. WIC is the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, funded by the United States Department of Agriculture. The mission of the WIC program is to improve the health and nutritional status of women, infants, and children during critical times of growth and development. In Alabama, WIC services are provided through the Alabama Department of Public Health and some private agencies. Local clinics certify individuals for participation in the WIC program. Women applying for WIC must be either pregnant, had a baby in the past six months, or breastfeeding. Infants up to one year of age and children up to five years of age are also eligible to apply. Applicants must have proof of residency in Alabama, proof of identity, and proof of income. In addition to meeting income requirements, the participant must also have a nutritional risk. Once certified, participants receive nutrition education and counseling, breastfeeding support, referrals to other health services, and supplemental foods. While on the program, participants learn information on healthy eating and receive foods that are good sources of nutrients. These foods include yogurt, milk, eggs, cheese, fruit juice, fortified cereal, peanut butter, dried beans, peas, whole grain bread, tortillas, brown rice, and fresh fruits and vegetables. For infants up to one year who are not breastfed, iron fortified infant formula, infant cereal, and infant foods are provided. As an authorized Alabama WIC vendor, you play an important role in your community by providing WIC participants an opportunity to purchase these nutritious foods. Participants are issued benefits via an electronic process where the food benefits are automatically added onto a card, like a debit card. This card is known as the eWIC card. Participants receive a shopping list at the clinic that specifies the types and quantities of foods allowed for purchase. The benefits are good for a specific time period and can only be redeemed at authorized WIC vendors. Currently, over 120,000 of Alabama's women, infants, and children participate in the WIC program, resulting in over $100 million being spent at authorized WIC vendors across the state. We can't do this without you, our authorized WIC vendor. Cashiers are an important part of the WIC transaction, and it is important that they understand how eWIC works so that they can help WIC customers should there be a problem at the register. Being knowledgeable and friendly can make an eWIC transaction easier. In order to understand the eWIC process, let's start out by reviewing some basic information about eWIC. The point of sale system, or POS, is the place where retail transactions occur. 
There are two types of POS systems that process EWIC transactions, an integrated system and a stand-beside system. In Alabama, over 97% of our authorized WIC vendors utilize an integrated POS system. An integrated system means the WIC software is part of the store system. Integrating WIC into the POS system is the preferred solution because it allows you to manage all aspects of eWIC in one system. The integrated POS system is programmed to accept all forms of payment, including eWIC, SNAP, credit, debit, and cash. It also allows for what is known as a mixed basket transaction where a WIC customer does not have to separate their WIC foods from other items. This allows the WIC customer the same shopping experience as all other customers. An integrated POS system allows for a mixed basket transaction because the system can accept multiple tender types such as SNAP, credit, debit, and cash. In a mixed basket transaction, the WIC customer is not required to separate their WIC items from other items. The POS system identifies which items are WIC approved and which items will be paid for using another payment method. During a mixed basket transaction, eWIC must be the first form of payment followed by SNAP, debit, credit, check, or cash. You will learn more about how this works later in the training module. In a stand-beside POS system, the eWIC software is on a device that is only capable of supporting WIC payment. WIC customers are required to separate their WIC items from other items. Cashiers have to double scan the WIC items, once in the stand-beside device and once in the store's POS system. Each register will need its own device to process eWIC. So if a store does not have a device for each register, then they are required to post signs at the lanes that accept eWIC. All customers must be allowed to utilize the lanes with the stand-beside device. Stores are not allowed to have a WIC-only lane. If only one lane is equipped with a stand-beside device, then it must be open to all customers. To understand how eWIC works, you must understand the approved product list and the WIC customer's benefit balance. To ensure that the WIC customer purchases only healthy, WIC-approved foods, Alabama WIC maintains a database of universal product codes. This is called the approved product list, or APL for short. WIC benefits are issued to an electronic benefit account at the local WIC clinic. The WIC customer's benefit balance includes all benefits that are available for purchase on their eWIC card. The eWIC transaction is driven by the APL and the corresponding benefits on the WIC customer's card. The APL file is a database of categorized universal product codes referred to as UPCs. It ensures WIC customers only purchase Alabama WIC approved foods. The APL file restricts cashiers from overriding items. Later in the training module, we will review what to do if an item does not scan as WIC approved. The Alabama APL file includes the International Federation for Produce Standards price lookup codes. For example, the PLU code of 4131 is for a large Fuji apple as shown on the screen. The Alabama APL file does not contain UPCs for fresh fruits and vegetables. Store generated or grower fresh fruit and vegetable UPCs must be mapped back to an International Federal Produce Standard, PLU, for the same produce item in Alabama's APL. Two examples are shown on the screen. The organic sweet corn 
UPC would be mapped to PLU 94078 for organic sweet corn yellow. And the bag of oranges with a UPC code would be mapped to PLU 3107 for navel medium oranges. Mapping is required because fresh fruit and vegetables are seasonal items and there could be 40 different UPCs for one seasonal item that sells out faster than the Alabama WIC program can add them to the APL file. Typically, corporate offices will handle mapping for the stores they support. Independent stores will likely complete the mapping process at the store level. No UPCs other than those for fresh fruits and vegetables can be mapped. It is important to know that mapping is an ongoing process. When the store receives new produce items that have UPCs, they must be mapped. Items that are not mapped will cause an issue at the register as the WIC customer will not be able to purchase the item using their eWIC card. Vendors must connect their POS system for each outlet to the state's eWIC processors system at least once each 24-hour period to transfer reconciliation files and the WIC APL file. The Alabama WIC program adds items on a regular basis. Adhering to this federal requirement will ensure that your store has the most up-to-date version of the APL file in the system. This is important because it can alleviate issues during checkout. If you have questions about the nightly download process, contact your POS provider. The APL is always a work in progress. As new products enter the market and manufacturer changes can lead to new UPCs. We need your help to make sure the APL is as up to date as possible. If you have items that you believe are Alabama WIC approved, but they did not scan as Alabama WIC approved, you can submit the UPC to the state WIC office. Please follow your store's guidelines for submitting items to the state WIC office. If you are part of a large corporate store, they may prefer that the submission come through the corporate office. Items submitted to the state WIC office will be thoroughly reviewed to ensure they meet all federal nutrition requirements. If after review, the product is approved, you will see it in a future APL file download. A new UPC will take up to 72 hours to be included in the APL file and available for purchase at the store. Guidelines for submission can be found on our website. This includes submission via our WIC app. The second part of understanding the eWIC transaction is the WIC customer's benefit balance. At the WIC clinic, participants receive education and printed materials to help them understand their benefit balance and how to shop using their eWIC card. A shopping list is printed at the clinic and provided to the WIC participant, listing the benefits issued to their card. A WIC customer can also view their benefit balance by having a balance inquiry done at an authorized WIC vendor. The benefit balance is shown as a combination of the quantity, unit of measure, and subcategory description of the item. Understanding how to read the eWIC benefit balance will help store personnel to assist with eWIC transactions. In eWIC, the customer is not required to purchase all items in their benefit balance at one time. As purchases are made, the foods will be deducted from their monthly benefit balance. For example, if the WIC customer is issued 36 ounces of cereal and purchases one 18-ounce box, they will see a remaining benefit balance of 18 ounces of cereal. In eWIC, the cash value benefit is known as CVB. It is shown on the receipt in dollar value. 
The CVB for fresh fruits and vegetables is the only item issued in a dollar amount. WIC customers must be allowed to pay the difference if their produce purchase exceeds their benefit amount. Checking the balance should be the first part of any WIC shopping trip, and we offer many ways for WIC customers to do this. The WIC customer can use the shopping list provided by the WIC clinic. They can also visit the online portal or call the customer service number on the back of their card, the receipt from their last eWIC transaction, list their benefit balance, and it is a federal requirement that authorized WIC vendors perform a balance inquiry upon request of the WIC customer. This means if a WIC customer comes in and asks you to run a balance inquiry, you must do that even if they do not make a purchase. On the screen, you can see a balance inquiry receipt, and it lists the quantity of foods available, the unit of measure, the subcategory description of the item. Remember, if a WIC customer asks you to run a balance inquiry, you must do so even if they do not make a purchase. If a WIC customer waits until the last day to redeem their benefits, they will want to get to a register early enough to complete the eWIC transaction by 11.59 p.m. If the transaction is not completed by 11.59 p.m., the WIC customer will lose any remaining benefits for that month. If they have benefits available for the next month, the items will be deducted from the new month's benefit balance. The benefit expiration date is printed on the WIC customer shopping list store receipts, and can be obtained via the online portal or by calling the customer service number on the back of the card. We hope you have gained some basic knowledge about how eWIC works. We will now review some important information about how eWIC works at the store. Because all POS systems operate differently, Alabama WIC does not train store personnel how to conduct an eWIC transaction. Store employees should receive training on how to use their specific POS system from the corporate office or for independent stores, the company that provides the POS system. For the purposes of this training module, we will review the basic steps that occur at the register during an eWIC transaction. We will now describe the basic steps of an eWIC transaction at a store using an integrated POS system. A WIC customer will bring their items to the checkout. It is not necessary for them to separate their WIC foods from other items. The cashier rings up all of the items, totals the transaction, and prompts the WIC customer to pay. The WIC customer swipes their eWIC card and enters their PIN. No additional ID is required. Once they enter their PIN, the system will print out a midpoint receipt and require the WIC customer to approve or deny the WIC portion of the transaction. The purpose of the midpoint receipt is for the WIC customer to confirm the WIC purchase quantities and amount prior to the use of additional methods of payment. At the majority of stores, this is done by a printout of a midpoint receipt that the cashier will give to the WIC customer to review. At some stores, the items are listed on the register screen for the WIC customer. The WIC customer will then accept or deny the WIC portion of the transaction. If there is no remaining balance after the customer approves the WIC portion of the transaction, then the transaction is over. If there is a remaining balance, the transaction will be over after the WIC customer pays the balance with another form of payment. If there is an unexpected balance, the cashier should offer to void the items before finalizing the transaction. It is important to note that once a transaction is finalized, items cannot be added back to the eWIC card. 
At the end of the transaction, the cashier will provide a final receipt to the WIC customer. The receipt will show the WIC items purchased as well as the remaining benefits and the benefit expiration date. There is no override option in eWIC, so it is important to know the four primary reasons an item may not ring up as WIC approved during an eWIC transaction. Let's review the four primary reasons an item may not ring up as WIC approved. The item is not an Alabama WIC approved item. The item is WIC approved, but not in the APL and needs to be submitted to the state WIC office. The WIC customer could be attempting to purchase an Alabama WIC approved food item that they have not been issued. A common example is a WIC customer might bring up whole milk when their benefit balance is for low fat or skim milk. The POS will not allow the whole milk to go through because it's in a different category that is not assigned to the eWIC card. The WIC customer has the benefit but does not have enough of the benefit available to make the purchase. For example, they started with 36 ounces of cereal but have nine ounces left due to previous purchases and are trying to buy a 16 ounce box using WIC. It will be up to the cashier to help troubleshoot why the items don't ring up and help the customer determine the best solution, such as getting the correct food, explaining why it didn't ring up, or submitting an item to be added to the APL. If an item does not ring up as WIC approved, the WIC customer has the option to remove that item only if the transaction is still open. If none of the above appear to be the issue, instruct the WIC customer to call the customer service number on the back of their eWIC card. Even though the APL controls what products customers can buy, the Alabama WIC approved foods brochure is still an essential tool because it lists allowable types, brands, and sizes of products. It should be used to troubleshoot when foods don't ring up as WIC approved and to help customers find the right foods. It is important to keep one at each register in case there is a question about whether an item is Alabama WIC approved. If you do not have an approved foods brochure at each register in your store, additional brochures can be ordered by contacting the state WIC office. You can also view the Alabama WIC approved foods brochure by downloading the Alabama WIC app. The app allows store personnel to access the brochure no matter where they are in the store. To illustrate the importance of the WIC approved foods brochure, Let's look at the shopping list on the left-hand side of the screen. The shopping list indicates one container of dry peas, dry beans, peanut butter, all authorized. But the customer needs to figure out what types, brands, and sizes are allowed and what isn't allowed. By looking at the dry peas, dry beans, peanut butter section of the food brochure, you can see what items are and are not allowed. For example, any brand of peanut butter is allowed in a 16 to 18 ounce container. The food brochure then lists specifics about the types of peanut butter that are allowed and are not allowed. This is useful for WIC customers while they are shopping and for cashiers when troubleshooting why something doesn't ring up as WIC approved. As previously mentioned, when conducting a mixed basket transaction, it is important that the customer use their tender types in the correct order, which is most restrictive WIC to least restrictive. The eWIC card should be used first, then SNAP, EBT if applicable, then any other form of payment. In eWIC, you are required to scan the UPC barcode directly from the item being purchased. 
If the item doesn't scan, you can manually enter the UPC directly from the item. It is a violation of federal regulations to scan codes from a scan book, UPC code book, or a reference sheet. Vendors are prohibited from having a clipboard of UPCs to use during an eWIC transaction. Cashiers are allowed to use the quantity function for identical items. If the eWIC card is not swiping, a cashier can enter the card number manually. Manual entry is only allowed if the card is presented by the WIC customer. Cashiers are never to enter the card number from a piece of paper. In order to make an eWIC purchase, a WIC customer just needs their eWIC card and four-digit PIN. Store personnel are never to ask a WIC customer for their PIN. If a WIC customer incorrectly enters their PIN three times, the card will lock and will not unlock until midnight. At this time, eWIC cannot be used at self-checkout, for home delivery, curbside pickup, or any type of mobile payment. As a reminder, WIC customers must be allowed to participate in promotions and specials offered to all other customers. This includes sales, coupons, loyalty, or customer reward cards. Store personnel often wonder if they can give refunds or allow exchanges for foods purchased with WIC. It is never okay for a store employee to provide a refund for WIC foods. If an item is damaged, spoiled, or expired, the store can do an even exchange for the exact same item. An example of an allowable exchange is when a WIC customer is requesting to exchange a 16 ounce loaf of bread due to mold. The cashier can allow the WIC customer to exchange it for the same 16 ounce loaf of bread. A non-allowable exchange is a WIC customer is requesting to exchange infant formula for a different kind of infant formula because their baby likes it better. You must instruct the WIC customer to contact their local WIC clinic. If an eWIC card is found, store personnel should turn in the card to the manager on duty. The manager should keep the eWIC card in a secure place and make key personnel aware of its location. If the eWIC card is unclaimed after 24 hours, the vendor must return the card to the state WIC office. The mailing address can be found on the back of the Alabama eWIC card. Each authorized WIC vendor is issued their own unique vendor ID number by the state WIC office. This number is used to identify payment processing for eWIC. Vendors receive payment for all eWIC transactions processed in their store through an automated clearinghouse system in which payments are directly deposited into the vendor's bank account. Vendors are responsible for all arrangements with their payment processor, their financial institution, and the state of Alabama eWIC processor. Maximum reimbursement amounts will be calculated at the UPC level. Any price adjustments are made at the point of sale. WIC vendors are prohibited from asking a WIC customer to pay the difference between the shelf price and the price paid by the WIC program. Unfortunately, there is no manual process for accepting eWIC when the system goes down. The WIC customer will have to go to another store or come back later. For server and network issues, integrated stores will call their POS provider or third-party processor. Stores using a stand-beside device will call the Conduit Retailer Help Desk. The WIC app has been mentioned several times throughout the training module. The Alabama WIC app is a free app available in the App Store and Google Store. We will now review three key components of the app that all store personnel can use. The app allows users to scan a barcode 
to determine if an item is Alabama WIC approved or not. This feature is accessible from the home page. Remember, the Alabama WIC approved item must be in the WIC customer's benefit balance for them to purchase it using their eWIC card. If an item is not showing as Alabama WIC approved, but you believe it is WIC approved, you can submit the item to be added to the APL using the app. This feature is easy to use and allows store personnel to enable a remember me function that will make future submissions easier. Store personnel can also use the app to access the Alabama WIC approved foods brochure. This feature allows store personnel to access the brochure from anywhere in the store. The Alabama WIC program is a federally funded program and as such we as well as our authorized WIC vendors, must adhere to federal regulations. In addition to federal regulations, there are also state procedures that must be followed. This section of the Alabama WIC Vendor Training Module reviews important WIC regulations for owners, managers, and store employees. The Alabama WIC Program Vendor Procedure Handbook provided to all authorized WIC vendors includes detailed information regarding these and additional requirements. Viewing this training module and reading the Alabama WIC Program Vendor Procedure Handbook will help to ensure that your store is in compliance with all regulations and procedures. Authorized WIC vendors must maintain the minimum stock requirements of WIC approved foods at all times regardless of the number of eWIC transactions at a given time. These requirements allow for a WIC customer to shop at your store and not deplete the inventory should another WIC customer present for the same items. The minimum stock requirements are listed in the Alabama WIC Program Vendor Procedure Handbook. It is important to note that spoiled or expired foods do not count towards the minimum stock requirements. We recommend stocking more than the bare minimum so that your store is always in compliance with the requirements. Make sure all store personnel are aware of the minimum stock requirements and that they are to meet them at all times. There is no exception to this rule. If a WIC representative visits your store and you do not have the minimum stock requirements on hand, it can result in termination of the store's Alabama WIC vendor contract. To ensure the safety of our WIC participants, all Alabama authorized WIC vendors are required to purchase infant formula from a list of approved sources maintained by the state WIC office. The complete list of Alabama WIC program approved formula suppliers is available on our website and is updated periodically. Invoices showing formula purchases must be made available to WIC representatives when they visit your store. Invoice requirements are outlined in the Alabama WIC vendor contract. Alabama WIC relies on our authorized WIC vendors to provide accurate and consistent training for all store employees handling WIC transactions. Initial training for new stores is provided by an Alabama WIC vendor trainer. Ongoing training for store personnel, including program updates, must be done on a regular basis by a designated trainer at the store. The Alabama WIC program provides several tools to help stores train their employees. These include a vendor training module, the Alabama WIC program vendor procedure handbook, the Alabama WIC approved foods brochure, the eWIC cashier essentials guide. These materials have been provided to all authorized WIC vendors and additional copies can be ordered for free by contacting the state WIC office. Failure to provide documentation of new employee and annual training on WIC is a sanctionable offense. 
If detected, the applicable sanction will be assessed and continued violations will result in disqualification from the WIC program. The documentation must clearly indicate WIC training, employee name, and date the training was conducted. The Alabama WIC program provides a training acknowledgement form on our website for stores that do not have an official training acknowledgement form. Although it is not a requirement of the Alabama WIC program to utilize shelf labels in your store, we do encourage them as it is a great way for WIC customers to identify WIC approved food items. These labels are provided free of charge by the state WIC office. Authorized WIC vendors also have the opportunity to use their own shelf labels to identify WIC foods, but these labels must be approved by the Alabama WIC program prior to use. Information regarding the approval process is outlined in the Alabama WIC program vendor procedure handbook. If you choose to use shelf labels to identify WIC food items, it is important that you move the shelf label when the product moves. If the shelf labels are not consistently maintained, it can create issues at checkout. Federal regulations prohibit the placement of WIC shelf labels directly on an item or packaging. Federal regulations prohibit the use of incentives to entice WIC customers to shop in a particular store. Vendors who use advertisements to solicit the business of WIC participants and or offer incentives or delivery services will be subject to contract termination. Incentives or promotional activities include free or complimentary gifts, such as but not limited to diapers, free daily meals, and other free services offered exclusively to WIC customers. As previously mentioned, WIC customers can receive a store loyalty card and participate in store promotions offered to all other customers. What stores cannot do is offer store incentives that specifically target WIC customers. For example, a store cannot offer the following promotion. Use your WIC here and get a free deli meal. The Alabama WIC program takes program integrity very seriously. There are several ways that we ensure authorized WIC vendors are compliant with federal regulations and the terms outlined in the Alabama WIC vendor contract. We will now review the three compliance activities conducted by the Alabama WIC program. Routine monitoring visits are unscheduled and can occur at any time. During a routine monitoring visit, WIC staff will check to see if the store has all minimum stock available. They check product expiration dates of WIC approved foods and provide needed education. Monitoring visits are a great time for store employees to ask the WIC representative any questions about WIC regulations or express concerns that they may have about the WIC program. While on site, WIC staff will also ask to see infant formula invoices, documentation of new and annual store employee training, and interview employees to determine their knowledge of WIC program requirements. The second method is a compliance buy. During a compliance buy, an individual posing as a WIC customer will come into the store and make sure employees are compliant with WIC regulations and procedures. A third method of checking compliance is an audit where WIC staff request a store's stock purchase records and compare them to their redemptions. If the store owner does not provide the records or is not able to prove that they have purchased as much WIC approved foods as they redeemed, the store will be disqualified. WIC program violations can be detected during any of the compliance activities we just reviewed. When violations are detected, the state WIC office may impose sanctions up to and including disqualifying the vendor from participation in the Alabama WIC program. 
Disqualification periods are determined by the type of violation. A complete list of sanctions can be found in the Alabama WIC Program Vendor Procedure Handbook and in the Alabama WIC Vendor Contract. WIC program violations can also result in fines, criminal penalties, and possible disqualification from the SNAP program. In addition, if you as a vendor are disqualified from the SNAP program, your Alabama WIC vendor contract will be terminated. The Alabama WIC program reviews eWIC transactions for potential overcharges and other violations. If a violation is detected, the state WIC office can delay payment or establish a claim against the vendor. The vendor must pay any claim assessed by the state WIC office by the due date specified in the notification or the vendor will be terminated for cause. At the state WIC office, we are very concerned about program fraud and abuse and take all complaints seriously. If you suspect a participant or another vendor is abusing the Alabama WIC program, call the state WIC office at 1-888-942-942. 4673 to report the abuse. Investigations are conducted on all complaints received. Due to the confidential nature of WIC investigations, no information can be released as to the outcome. Federal law prohibits any kind of discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, age, sex, or disability. If the state WIC office receives a complaint that discrimination has occurred in your store, it will be thoroughly investigated and applicable sanctions will be assessed. Instructions on how to file a program complaint of discrimination can be found in the Alabama WIC program vendor procedure handbook. If you have questions regarding WIC regulations and procedures, do not hesitate to contact the state WIC office at 1-888-942-4673. We are here to help our authorized WIC vendors. Working together, we can ensure every WIC participant has a pleasant shopping experience and you in turn can gain a loyal customer. This concludes the Alabama WIC vendor training module. If you are watching this during interactive training or new store employee training, be sure to complete all applicable training documentation.